What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 52. Matt, what's going on? I hear you got a special guest in Columbus. We do. We got a special guest to our left. We got Kyle Snyder here. Um, so he's going to jump in on the episode today. We're going to jump in, kind of do a, uh, get some of his thoughts about the U.S. Open this weekend. Also looking into uh, forward to next Monday at Beat the Streets. And then also maybe get into a little bit about his preparations leading up to uh, Final X. All right. Nice. All right, Kyle, first take from the U.S. Open. Go. First take from the U.S. Open is uh, things things were crazy in regards to guys competing at a really high level when I didn't necessarily expect them to do that. Oh, really? Who, who was your yeah. most unexpected? Yanni, I would say, was the, uh, not, not that he's not. I agree. Great. I agree. Yeah. Totally. Not that he's not a great wrestler and that I've seen I've seen him, you know, obviously beat a lot of good guys, but I thought Zane and J O were, you know, probably the two favorites in that weight class. And yeah. even after Yanni beat J O, I thought that Zane was just gonna be too strong and too good of a finisher when he got to his legs, uh, for Yanni to do that trick knee stuff. But Wait, you yeah. so you thought even on uh Friday night after Yanni beat Frank and Jordan because that was kind of the turning point for me. When he beat those two, I'm like, damn, maybe he is that good right now. Uh, that you still thought Zane was going to get him in the finals? Yes. Wow. Okay. I did. That's what I mean. But yeah. I, I, I just I thought that Zane was gonna was gonna be too strong. I thought that he was going to. Uh, I've I've never really seen people and and Zane wrestles guys like Nolf and yeah. Uh, those those tricky guys in the room every day. So I didn't think that it would be. I thought that he would be able to finish on Yanni, but I mean Yanni surprised me, and he's just really tough. He's got a big heart. Russell's yeah, I mean, really hard. I think that's what Ben and I's takeaway when we were talking in Vegas. It's not that we were surprised that. It's not like we didn't believe in Yanni, but that he was. No, I didn't. I'm a Yanni fan, Matt, but. I, no, I we. I, I, don't I didn't. Think, I didn't think he was this good yet. I didn't think he was. Yeah, this no, good it's yet. yeah. We that. were. We were saying we thought maybe next year was the year that he yes. was going to come into That's his own. That's what I thought. Not that, I thought I and, it, and, we, and we weren't surprised that he. We we thought he would be able to compete with those guys right now. Did we think he was going to be able to beat them? No, we thought he he probably needed a little bit more, you know, at least one time through the senior open, you right. know, to get his feet wet, get get his bearings a little bit, get his under, but you know. He proved us all wrong. And that's but, what I love. I I love when you know you're ready, you know? Like I, I'm I'm in the belief that you don't enter into the US Open as a college kid until you're gonna win the thing. You know? Really? So, no, I I wouldn't enter into it. I, I don't what? I don't think no, I don't think you come in there with the idea of I'm testing out the waters. You come in there to win. Wait, okay, what, what, what if you're above you, what what if you're above junior age? And so you just think you shouldn't compete if you're oh, above no, that, junior age? Maybe you wrestle in U twenty threes, but if you're above junior age, then then once you graduate college, I mean that's the only thing to wrestle. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying sure. when you're a junior or a college uh, age wrestler, then maybe, so, yeah, yeah. So maybe this is jumping ahead, and we're maybe just gonna bounce around. As Wait, far as I want to I want to grill Kyle on this. I'm very curious <laughs> his take. Well, I was gonna ask another specific question into this that okay. could maybe expound. Like we were talking about Mark Hall. Yeah, you know, for the past two years, we think we've been wondering where oh, so he's you at. Th you think you, know? you think Kyle's got insight on where my, Mark Hall's been hiding at? No, for the I'm years? just saying. I'm just saying to Kyle's, Kyle's theory of Kyle. hey, you don't jump into the senior level until you think, yeah, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to win. Kyle's this. got a Kyle's got a nest cam on Mark's house. He's going <laughs> to yeah. give us his whereabouts. <laughs> I mean that that could answer answer the question. You know, obviously. You know, Mark Hall's won a couple of junior world titles, so he we know what he can do at the junior level, but we haven't seen him compete at the best guys mm. on the senior level. Maybe is that that what he's waiting for? I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I I I think that it's important for guys to move through their age level and not not mm. jump not jump levels too quickly. Like even even Gable Stevenson, you know, last year he wrestled in the U.S. Open, yeah, um, and he did well. But it, it didn't seem like he was ready to to make the team, so I think that he did it too early. And then, of course, he wrestled in the junior worlds as well, which I think is smart. It's important to be 
if you can be on a world team, then it's important to be on a world team, no matter what age level you're going to be at, because it's it's valuable competition. But the way that I think about it is when I in 2015, even though people might not have thought that I was ready to make the team, I had been wrestling Tervel and JD and Varner and all those guys in camp, and I knew that I was I was close and could and could beat them if I wrestled. Uh, if I wrestled my best in competition. So I didn't enter the event with the idea of I'm just here to test the water. I'm just here because it's good to get matches, but I was there to win the tournament. Wait, so and let me ask you this though, Kyle. Did not let's not take yourself out of your shoes for a second. Say you're yeah. uh say you're a head college coach and you got a couple guys who are they're twenty one, they're twenty two, maybe they're all Americans in the NCAA championship, but you think it's probably unlikely that they would uh that they're gonna you know, maybe do that well, not let alone win, do that well at the open. Would you tell them to forego that competition, maybe just wrestle U twenty threes? Or yes. do you, you so you don't think there's any value in getting that feel of those older guys? No, I think there is value to getting it and I would get it at the world team training camps in the summer because if you're if you're if you're talented enough to all American and you can then then surely coach Zadik and the guys at USA Wrestling would accept you to come in into camp and helping the mm-hmm. world team. And that's that's I think that's the best way to do it. And then you make your world team at the U23 level and you wrestle in that until you know, I mean, once you graduate college, it's you really there you pretty much have to wrestle in the US Open, but yeah. when you're in college, I think it is important to be strategic in when you make your senior level debut. Okay, so this is I've got a couple questions that that lead right into that. So you felt and you you understood that you were ready, but you also during your the year after you graduated high school, you moved out to the training center. You know, we've got two two guys out there right now that that won uh, uh, junior titles this week, and Aaron Brooks and Gabe Tag. Right? right, they're they're both out at <clears throat> the training center. What was your experience like? And I know that it's not for for everyone and you've got to be wired a certain way and you've got to be a, there's a certain level of maturity. Um, but what what led you to that decision? And why do you think that was good for for Aaron Brooks and Gabe Tag? Because, you know, in hindsight, it's looking after after this weekend, like a very good decision for both of those guys. Right. Yeah. So I think that now the way that USA Wrestling has set up that program, it, it basically is for everyone. So, I mean, now they have like, they have a full-time uh, staff member that's there just to help them with their homework and to make sure that they're doing their school and tutoring them and different stuff like that. And then they have Co- Kevin Jackson, who's, I mean, amazing that they get to work, that those guys get to work with him every day. So there's more support there than when I came. I was, me, I guess me and Henry were kind of like the guinea pigs, guinea pigs <laughs> with that project. And when I went there, it was just us guys who were training and the coaching staff, we didn't have people who could drive us around and take us to the movies and different stuff like that. We kind of just did whatever we wanted to Wait, do. They right got there. movie chauffeurs now. <laughs> yeah. The lady, I mean, the lady that works there, she'll like, if they want to go to bowl, go out to bowl oh, or go out. They're getting soft. They're getting soft. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Exactly. yeah. So now it seems like you really, if you have to, of course, hold yourself a little bit of, accountable to your actions and Uh things like that but there's people there who are going to be holding you accountable as well Um, but for me it was I kind of exhausted all my training partner options unless I was going to drive you know to different colleges and RTCs Mm -hmm. when I was in high school and that would have been difficult anyways because they would have to set up RTC camps and things like that so the OTC when I went out there I knew there was going to be Kilgore, Reader, Jack Jensen training there full-time yeah uh, along with the senior world team camps coming in. So it just made a lot of sense for me to go out there and work. So what were, what were some of the challenges that you had to navigate through, you know, being out there? When, when did you move out there? Were you 18? When you moved I was out 17. There? 17. So, you know, looking back, you know, you're what, five, five years removed from that now. What were some of the challenges that you had to go through Look, looking back in hindsight now? I would say I'm not really the, to, the guy who gets homesick very often. And I was very focused when I was there because I had heard stories about people uh, just the other athletes who had been there making mistakes and really putting themselves in a hole in regards to their wrestling career and stuff like that. So when I went out there, I, I was very focused and knew that this, I was out here for a purpose to be, to become a better wrestler um, and to learn from all these people. 
So uh, to answer your question, I didn't really have too many challenges because of that. I think maybe I got a little homesick occasionally, but I, I, I had a car out there as well. So if anybody who's been out to the OTC knows you need a car because you can't stay on that campus <laughs> right. all the yeah. time. But brutal. I, yeah. <laughs> so boring. So, yeah. <laughs> so so back to our original question, when it when it came down to make the choice, like I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna make my senior level debut. You know, I know it, you you just said in your heart you knew you were ready, just based upon the guys that you had to had to compete against, your your junior world, your your cadet world experiences, I know probably helped prepare you for your senior level debut. Did you rely on anybody's advice or did you just go with your heart and your gut say, yeah, I'm ready? Or did you look to Bill or did you look to Brandon or or yeah. any of those guys and look for their advice and said, hey, am I ready? I looked to all of them. I looked to all of them. I Yeah, I mean, I talked to Coach Zadek and I talked to Lou Roselli and me and Terrell obviously talked a lot. And after, after I lost the NCAA finals my freshman year, I actually – uh because i keith gavin was in the room as well and i had been wrestling well with him better with keith than i did with jd so i was actually thinking about going down to 84 kilo after Dang, my, my really run. yeah so i talked to Travell and i was like Travell, what do you think about me going down to 84 kilo for the open and he was like no you're not no way and i was like what and he was like no you're not doing that you're wrestling 96 and i was like ah oh, okay Dang, <laughs> that idea was shot down Wait, quickly. Wait, could you have legit made that? 185. Um, it was 185 at that point, and yeah. I was making I was making 197 pretty easily by really? the end of the wow. yeah by the end of the season. So, to me, it seemed like, and I've always been pretty disciplined, so it seemed like it was a legitimate legitimate deal, but. I, and at that time, it would have been a day before, day before weight, weight. Yeah. right? So you yeah. could you would have had that that night to recover before you had to compete, right? And that what the really the turning point for me was before the U.S. Open, I got invited to uh, be the alternate on the World Cup team, mm. and Jake Varner was the number one guy, and me and Jake wrestled two matches. We wrestled all throughout camp, and Jake had pretty much killed me my whole time I've ever wrestled him since 2013 when I went out to the yeah. training center. And then I wrestled him in two matches. In the first match, he tech fault me, uh, but it was kind of like a hard fought tech fall. It took like five and a half minutes for him to do it. And then mm -hmm. the second match, um, he beat me like seven to four, and he took me down and he gutted me twice, like real early. And then I like kind of slowed him down, got him tired, and took him down twice later in the second period. Nice. It was the first time we ever wrestled a full match. And then after that, I remember talking to Terrell because he was there, and I was like, man, I definitely think I'm ready to like – beat this guy the next time I wrestle him if I make a couple adjustments. So that was like the turning point for me. And then wow. people just reassured me, believed in me, told me that I could do it. And yeah. Yeah. Cause this goes back to, you know, Ben, you, you were having a conversation with Yanni <clears throat> after the quarterfinals. Yeah. Right. And uh, Yanni, after the, semis. Yanni, after the semis and Yanni had actually told Ben, like he had never beaten J.O. in the practice room before. Similar to what you were saying wow. about Jake, is that you had never actually beat Jake. You had worked out with him for for several years. Yanni's been in 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 the room with Jo for for a year, and it had never beat him. But it sounds similar to you after that seven four match, where it was you you close the gap pretty dramatically in in that one hour window between your first match and your second. You know, you think there was some of that with, with Yanni, like. Yeah, I've never beaten this guy, but but I know, and I know it's a different dynamic when when the lights are on outside the room and then getting under the lights. Did For you sure. think? I think all those special guys have another gear, you know, that they can yeah. find when when the lights truly come on. You I, I don't know if it's another space. gear, Matt. I, I just I, I, well, I don't. It's got to be something. Think, so how how well, would you I'm tell you? It? I'm gonna tell you what I think it is. Here's what I okay. think it is. Lay it on. I I think it's um um. Oh, I had something else to yell at you about today, and I forgot what it is right now, but I will I will remember by the time we get done with this podcast. I think it's that they don't get affected as much by the bright lights and the big stage and all that all that stuff. Whereas certain people like a JO has had down performances in big moments before. I mean, for example, when he lost to Logan Steve in the NCAA finals earlier that year earlier that year, he killed him, right? And so JO's had a few down performances. Whereas um, 
I think the you know what you're speaking of is what some guys when they get in the bright lights, it just doesn't affect them. They're just cool. They love to compete. It's not a big deal. And I think you would say that Yanni falls into that category. Yeah, and I kind of saw thought, and I, I would like to get your thoughts on this, Kyle. You know, once the match was competitive, come the break, and going back to you know some of the obstacles that JOs had to overcome in the second in the second period, I thought maybe there were some some seeds of doubt. Oh, in, Matt, in, hold on! The- I remember, I remember what I was going to yell at you about. <laughs> okay, I remember, and I don't even know if I should say this on the radio, but hell, let's go for it. Um, we were discussing on the podcast on Saturday. You said you didn't think J- Jordan Burroughs lost a step. And I, I, wanted, no. I wanted to ask you if you'd watched the Franklin Gomez match and if you still held that same thought. No, I don't think he's lost a step. Have you watched the match? I have watched the match. Really? I have. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I think I think you what if if anything you may be discounting and I I I I addressed this this weekend. Franklin Gomez is one of the best athletes in the entire world. And I think if you're saying JO has lost a step or or Jordan Burroughs has lost a step, I think you're not you're kind of sliding Franklin Gomez on his level of athleticism because I think Franklin is one of the best athletes in the entire world. I think he mm. can actually is one of the few guys that can actually match Burroughs' athleticism step oh, for yeah. step. Well, I, hmm. Okay, fair <laughs> fair enough. You st- you start your guns. I dig it. Okay, so back back can <laughs> we get back to Jordan Burroughs or, or Jordan Jordan Oliver? I was yes, thinking, go back you know, that. when when the match was competitive, I think it was a it was a it was a shift for both guys. I think there was a, some seeds of doubt for Jordan uh, mm-hmm. Oliver because he he has struggled. You know, when guys bring pace, they bring heat throughout the entire six minutes, especially in a tight match. He's kind of faltered a little bit, and Yanni, who's supremely conditioned, who's who's I've never seen this guy get tired. I thought when he went to the break and it was close, it actually bolstered his confidence and gave him like extra wind in his sails. Like, oh, I'm close, and I'm feeling great, and I know this guy has a tendency to get tired. I think that's where you know the tide kind of shifted a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I think that. Um... Back to your original point, Yanni having the chance to wrestle Jordan in the room every day. I think even even because similar to situation to Yanni, I, I never beat J.D. Bergman in a match, in a refereed match. I never beat him, like simulation in the room. I never beat him uh, at all. in 2015 or 2016. We didn't wrestle too much, but in 2015, definitely, I never beat him. But, you know, we were in the same bracket in the U.S. Open, and I ended up winning the thing. Uh, so I don't, I think that just being able to feel them and knowing that you're close, you don't even necessarily have to beat them because you you never know what's going to happen in a match. And I do think that it being as close as it was and the takedowns being difficult for Jordan and Yanni scoring on them. And, uh, yeah, I think that gave, even though the match was close, you would think both guys would have energy. I think it did take some away from Jordan and boost up Yanni. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, let's be a Kyle can be a unbiased third party. And so, just Kyle, let me just explain you what I was saying about the Jordan's lost step. I said, listen, I'm not trying to be offensive. He's still on this. He can't. You just want me to well, say he's lost. No, step. would you feel no, a lot better if I just say no, he lost the step? No, no, no. I, I you, you held true to your opinion. Listen, I said, oh, so, I, I okay, said, man, and, and I said, okay. If you what? want me to further my argument, okay, look across. Just remove yourself from wrestling and yes. look look across the board at all sports and look at the, the level of competition and the age in which these athletes can compete in football, yeah. in, in baseball, in basketball, in hockey. I think just the level of training, the attention to nutrition, you know, uh, the physiological aspects of the sport and what's available for these guys and what they know that the, they need to do and how they need to train their body, prepare their body, recover their body. All these things are so advanced now that not only does ex- it extend your shelf life as a competitive mm-hmm. athlete, but you don't lose that step because oh, you're so up. Let me, let me just tell step. Kyle what I think and then we can hear. Obviously, opinion. like, uh, don't get me wrong. Age you know, hey, you're not letting me. You're the, not letting me tell Kyle my the, my side. I know, but I'm I'm just you're being, saying you're being greedy right now. I I am, I am. So, 
<laughs> the clock, the clock always wins, right? The calendar always wins. You know, the, you know, it's, it's a byproduct of, of just getting older. Yeah. Eventually it's going to catch up with you, but we're not, this guy does not have a gray beard. He's 31 years old. It's not like he's old by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. Sure. I don't disagree. Okay. So here's what I'm saying, Kyle. I was saying, and I was saying it honestly more as a compliment than a negative. I was saying that the best of the best always find ways to evolve as they get older. And I think right. the fact that Jordan's not quite, doesn't quite have the pop he did say six, seven years ago. He's kind of had to find new ways to win. He's got great hand fighting. He scrambles really well. He does these other things, but that doesn't negate the fact that he is slightly different than he was in 2012 or 2013. That's what I was saying. How do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that last year when I went watching Jordan at, at the Worlds, um, I, I, I felt like he did something look different about him. You know, I don't know, I don't know if losing a, losing a step is the way that I would describe it, but I think that something did look different about him. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested to see what he looked like this year. And I think that weight did, I think that weight played an issue played a role in that issue in the way that he competed you mean making weight or what yeah making weight oh, because really? jordan yeah i mean and he hadn't made scratch weight day of a long time you know huh, he, he interesting had, he, he, so that i think that change probably played played a part in the way that he was able to compete but then watching him compete watching him wrestle so if you would have asked me after the world championships do you think jordan bros lost a step I don't know if I would have said he lost a step, but I would say, huh, yeah, something looks different. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. But then watching him compete at the Dan Kolov this year, even in his first round bout, I mean, he wrestled three or four, three three guys who were, you know, world level competitors, top 10 guys in the world at that tournament, and then finishing off with Bex out in the finals, yeah, making scratch weight, making scratch weight two days in a row. And I thought that he looked just as good as he's ever looked, um, if not better. So that Franklin match was surprising to me. I, I, I expected Jordan to, to, to beat him pretty good. So I was surprised with that result. Yeah. I mean, Franklin so. did what he did to keep it close. It was and so that, right. I mean, that match is available on YouTube now if anyone wants to go watch it. But, you know, Franklin didn't leave himself up to openings. Hey, you know one fascinating part of the match, Matt, that I uh, – and Kyle, that I thought was awesome? So – uh, Gomez gets Jordan's leg up with like 46, <laughs> yeah. 47 seconds left. And it's funny because I see him like trying to push him towards out of bounds. It, well, it looks like he's trying to push, but I realize he's not actually trying to push him. He's just faking like he's trying to push him. And I realize what he's doing. He's trying to let the clock tick down a little more and a little more and a little more because he doesn't want Burroughs to have time left on the clock when he scores. And so and he ends up he got the leg up with 47 seconds left. He ends up scoring with 10 seconds left. And Jordan still scored on him after that. Oh, man. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. I was laughing when I realized that he was faking like he was trying to push him out of bounds. <laughs> it was so funny. That's a, that's a, that's a the veteran move right there. Right? Yeah. So let's, get, let's, let's jump back into uh, the Open from this weekend. And let's jump jump up up top and some of the guys that maybe not necessarily in your weight class but potentially you know in the in the next year um we had a a couple young guys that, that it's more 92 ki kilograms yeah. with uh with nickel and uh you know zilmer and also machiavello um what, what was your takeaway there because it it seemed like not only there was there was there a young guy jumping in, but also we saw that at, at 57 kilos with, with uh date fix overcoming uh, Gilman as right. well. So maybe g give some of your thoughts or takeaways from, from those two weights. Yeah. So 92 was surprising to me. Um, like I said, I, I was surprised by a lot of the results, maybe not even who won the match, but just the way that they were winning. So I, I, I've had, wrestled with mock and I, I trained with Bo a little bit. Did you, wrestled... did you spend some time in Raleigh last year, Kyle? Yeah. Okay, and mock was, he was my training partner for the world championships. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. So we wrestled a lot and he was, he was really impressive uh, over the summer, just watching him wrestle different guys in the team, way he competed, his defense, how strong he was. Um, 
that was impressive to me. So I, I thought that it would be a, a, a pretty close match with him and Bo. Um, and I'd, I'd seen them wrestle before in camps where it was close, but I mean, competition is obviously different. Uh, so Bo put him in positions where he's really good at scrambling and, and exposing people and uh, even getting to his legs and finishing. I was impressed with Bo uh, when he just lifted him up the, off the mat and from that chest lock position. So, and then I also thought Hayden Zilmer would, would be a difficult matchup for Bo because of his strength and hand fighting and he's good on top and he's good upper body in places yeah. where yes yeah, he's he's got he's proficient in greco he's really good in greco so that's ben and i were talking about that this weekend like hey this guy's gonna be you know most guys when when, when nickel challenges the, the those guys up top they're very uncomfortable with that but that's kind of like zilmer's like he's he's really well, really comfortable i, I don't believe there was side. a lot of points scored up top in that match correct no I, I don't all, think there's none takedowns. it was all takedowns yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. All right, so, so well, let, what do you think about PD3? Let's go there. PD3? Is that your boy, uh, Maryland? That's Maryland. Yeah, he, I, I, I've i known Pat for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, again, surprised with uh, – I wasn't surprised uh, I, with – with the the courts matching him in the in the in the quarters, I thought that that would be a good match, and I I know Pat's really strong, and uh, so I I thought he could win that match, but with Miles, um, I definitely thought that Miles was the favorite, and that he it, it would be you know Miles would be too fast for him and get to his legs, and that's the way the match was going for a while, but I'm not sure what happened in the second period. Miles maybe got a little bit little tired, and Pat worked on top, and uh, ended up yeah. turning them. So that was impressive. And then Heflin's another tough guy to score on, but Pat's really good upper body and uh, was able to score from there. So yeah, I mean, Pat, Pat did a, Pat did a really good job this weekend and I'm happy for him because he's definitely had to go through a lot of tough things um, to get to, to the point where he's at. And now it seems like he's really been able to train and focus. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens at the world team trials. And then of course they'll have David Taylor waiting for them. And the final yeah. X. So, you saw what Pat said on Twitter, right? People were telling me about it. Yeah, ah. he talk, yeah, Russell beat the streets. Yeah, well, we well, say he what, said what, he, he said he specifically he said he beat a Buckeye in the quarters, the semis, and the finals. <laughs> which I didn't even realize that. It's pretty outstanding and funny. Funny, it to is think about it, it is, is crazy. how crazy is that? Wow, yeah. that's wild. And they said so. He said now he wants the King Buckeye or something. Yeah, and beat the streets. Yeah, I already got a match. You already got a match. I can wrestle Pat whenever he wants to wrestle. It's no problem. I'll wrestle. <laughs> <him>. <laughs> so what, what, what do you think? Switching switching gear back to uh, fifty seven kilograms and uh, with with Dayton and Gilman uh, in the finals. There. You know, yeah. those guys are very familiar with it, with each other at, the, at this point. And what what was your general takeaway from that match? I was impressed with Dayton because Gilman's so good at hand fighting and so good at pushing and so strong. Um, so I, I I think he's a tough matchup for anybody. And it, and it's not like you're excited to wrestle him after you wrestle him a couple <laughs> times, you know, it's like you wrestle him, Dayton wrestled him twice in the best two out of three last year. And I can't imagine that this is like, Oh, I'm excited to wrestle Gilman again. You know, it's going to be fun. I'm going to get my head club a thousand times and pushed around but Dayton uh he 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 withstood he, he withstood the hand fight a lot better than he did even against Suriano in the NCAA final so he made some adjustments there and then he was shooting and get to his leg and finishing so um I I think that Dayton has has jumped uh he's he's made adjustments he's gotten better even since the NCAAs whether it's mentally or whether it's technically he, he's he's making improvements and um yeah so i was i was really impressed with him and i think with him sitting in the final x that's going to be a tough tough guy to beat yeah and i think that the thing that ben and i were looking at with gilman like this is a a more evolved gilman too like he's a better version of what he was i didn't say more evolved i didn't say more evolved i just said better (laughs) what's okay Explain the def- difference in the definition there. Well, the- I mean, like against NATO, he didn't like do anything different. He did the same push forward and underhook. It was just better than he had been in before. So I wouldn't say I don't think he evolved. So he's he's more involved just- in his hand fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, Matt. 
Matt, I'm just Matt, saying you're gonna, just you're, saying. you're gonna be all fired up today. <laughs> I think you're just trying to antagonize just, me today. I'm just trying to poke you today. But no, I'll to what we are just trying to say, we're giving credit to Gilman. Like we thought he was improved from from the fix that Gilman saw in Final X a year ago. I thought I thought Gilman was a better version and, and you thought the same thing, which again, that's even more praise to fix and what he he was able to accomplish you know right right yeah okay so let's <laughs> matt why, why are you trying to antagonize me so much today <laughs> no i think that's huge that fix gets to sit out until final x i think that makes him the favorite over uh gilman for sure i mean gilman yeah. after going through the mini term is and, and make weight i mean that huge that, that is for me that's huge where they go for the U.S. Open. Now they have to make weight twice again in three weeks. They have to wrestle the main tournament and the best two out of three. And then two to three weeks later after that, they have to go make weight again at Final X and wrestle two out of three. I mean, that's uh, – I don't want to say it's that tough, but it's – it's you know, now Dayton Fix kind of gets to sit out for six weeks and, you know, and game plan for one opponent essentially. Right. And one thing with Gilman, it's not it's it's he's so disciplined with his weight that it's really not that big of a deal for him to make it. Yeah. Uh make it over and over again. He probably makes weight after every workout. That's that's how close he is. And really? He, he just, that's small. No, he looks what? Huge. Come he on. Looks he, he looks huge. He looks huge. Yeah, he looks huge. And you're, and sure, I, sure, you're shocking me. I think he's lying to you. He's not that small dog. No, I've seen him on the scale. <laughs> I, I, he it, it 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 he's really disciplined. So just he doesn't have any fat on his body so like yeah. he does look massive but uh -huh. he, he basically has no body fat so he has to sit near his weight uh to make it so i don't but i but even though he's close to weight just wrestling in the tournament alone is going to be difficult and then having to do it again a couple weeks after that is like Damn. you said yeah so do you think let me let me ask you this is it more physically taxing or mentally taxing to both. to both yeah. So how I mean, you haven't had been in this position much where you've had to, to wrestle through the open, wrestle through a world trials, then make it to a final X. Like, how do you, how would you like what are some of the things that you do? Would you do to make sure you ramp up to that event, ramp down and with the ability to ramp up again two two weeks later? Yeah, it's kind of hard to say because. Like I like this process is new with the final X. You know, it used to just be the guy sitting in the World Team Trials finals, and then you have to you wrestle in the Open in the World Team Trials. And but now there's a third event, so it'd be hard for me to answer that question right now because I'd have to really sit down and think about the schedule and what I would do and how my workouts would change and to get to get ready for ramping up for three events. Like you said, I mean, I mean it's, well, it's got to change. Talking. It's got to change quite a bit because obviously. You know, we, you were talking about peaking. You you essentially have to peak for the trials because not like you can say, "Oh, I'm just so much <laughs> better than everyone that I don't even have to wrestle that well, and I'm gonna still win the trials, and then I'm gonna right. go to final X." You know, so it's like, man, you're you're got, and, and you know, a lot of guys come out come out of the U.S. Open banged up or dinged up. So it's like, okay, if they want to take five days off, now they have ten days to get ready, and then they're gonna take a few days off to peak before peak and make weight before the uh, the trials. It's just such a cramped uh schedule that i i do think it's a huge advantage for those who could yeah i mean on. if anything to your point ben it just seems like even more of an advantage now that there's one more layer yeah. between yeah. the u.s open world trials and final x even more advantage and and more incentive to make sure you make it to final x and and sit out that entire month yeah absolutely um Okay, what other weights you want to talk about, Matt? And I feel like we haven't even hit the junior trials. I almost feel like I didn't think we were going to do another show this week, Matt, but I almost feel like we should do another show this week. So we, you know, maybe yeah, I, even a shorter one. So we hit the juniors with the respect they deserve because that's a great tournament. Yeah, I, th I think maybe we jump into that tomorrow. Um, I think there's maybe a few other thoughts we can we can finalize on this weekend and also looking in. I'd love to, to spend a few minutes since both of you guys are, are going to be you know, wrestle next Monday. Oh know, yeah, let's talk about Petey Streets, streets get, for a minute. Get your thoughts on that. I think if, if there's nothing else with the U.S. Open, we can jump in to beat the streets. Kyle, I know what is this number seven? How many, how many times have you been in beat the Dang, streets? Dang, Kyle. I no, wrestled, Kyle's like 22 years no, old. There's no way yeah. it's number seven. Oh, so he started I wrestled, at 14. <laughs> I wrestled Gatsalov. Gatsalov. What year? Cuba. 
Uh, got <laughs> all of Cuba, Japan, Cuba. It's my fifth year. Okay. Fifth yeah. Year. And what, what what do you love? What do you love about this event? Um, man, the matchups are cool. There's always if if you're not in one of the better matchups, then there's always a bunch of cool matchups that you can watch. Um, it's just very unique competing in New York City. Usually, it's in Times Square or somewhere outside, and that doesn't typically happen. Uh, there's some of the best junior level wrestlers that compete in it. Um, so yeah, I think it's just really the matchups is what makes it cool for me. Um, that's why. I enjoy wrestling in it. Yeah. Dang. Um, what What do you, I mean, I, I do feel like Times Square was much cooler than uh, the yeah. Madison Square Garden. I, so I guess I was kind of disappointed with the Madison Square Garden this year. Do you I think they kind of knee jerked after last year with the, uh, whatever, well, that's, that's what I was water, water, say. Watergate, Watergate, or whatever you want yeah, to talk about. La last year was so, a disaster. So that, it's definitely possible. Yeah. And I think that was more of a byproduct. They, they put it right by the river last year. So you're you're asking for that when you're talking about it's right at dawn, you know, the sun setting, you know, the yeah. uh, precipitation is rising, especially off the river. They got brand new mats, you know, every year. So it's gonna it's gonna lend itself. I'm surprised that they didn't think about that. But it seemed like moving it indoors to Madison Square Garden Theater was maybe a, a, a bit of a, a knee jerk. But it's also a historic venue which is really really cool in and of itself right um yeah. but kyle there's never been any condensation issues like that in times square correct i don't recall that no no huh and i think yeah part of the problem last year too was it was like supposed to rain and it did rain a little bit so yeah it was already humid but in times square um no nah, there was no problems issues with the the mats yeah. being slippery or anything like that at least when hmm. i'm competing in it do you think this year is any different? I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I really liked. I, I, it's been a long time now. I feel like maybe the past five years, there's been a a country theme, you know. Versus, I there Iran was the one year in the, uh, it was the train terminal, and then they had Russia, they had Cuba. It, I feel like it, in the recent memory, it's been against a specific team. This year, obviously, that's not the case. Do you think that's going to change the dynamic of the event, or no? I don't really think it's going to change the dynamic of the event. I mean, people are still going to be interested in a lot of these matchups. And there is there is still some uh, foreign competition coming in, especially with Yanni wrestling Pajrang. Pajrang, that's going to be probably Ooh, one I of love the, that matches, one. <laughs> the matches that everyone's looking forward to. Um, so, no, I think really people just want to, whether it's a country we're wrestling or whether it's, uh, just a group of people. They just want to see good matchups and things that yeah. could be exciting. So now, now for you personally, hey, listen, I think Bob, I think Yanni's gonna take out Barong Barong. <laughs> you think so? I think so. I think those well, guys bring the pace. Bra, ba, well, we just talked about Yanni doesn't get tired. Barong Barong brings the pace, but he's pretty simple. Yanni's gonna do some wizard shit like he did last weekend. Barong's not gonna know that doesn't exist in India. He's not gonna know what hit him. Yeah, he's gonna have a bunch of points, and then it's gonna be all over. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that should be it. That listen, should be it. Yanni did some wizard stuff last weekend. Like, oh my gosh, holy crap, how did that happen? I need to see that again. That didn't happen once with him. That happened two, three, four times. It, it, but, he was just ridiculous. But with Otaguru. Oduguru is really, really talented too, and he's got some tricks too. So I mean, it's not like but Oduguru is different than Yanni, Matt. He's he's, he's more a, offensive, he's a, but he's a different type of freak. But he's still a freak nonetheless. Yes, sure, right. Fair, so it's not fair. like it's you know he's you know going to be seeing an alien for the first time. I mean, he's seen yeah. different versions of a similar athlete, you know, at this level for an extended period of time. One thing that's I think will present the biggest challenge for Yanni in this match is that Bajrang Bajrang is not afraid of getting 10 pushouts. You know what I'm saying? Like Bajrang Bajrang, he doesn't care about <laughs> getting the takedown. Like he'll literally just but run he, you out of bounds. He goes if, to high if, singles and, and underhook to high crotch a decent amount. Yeah, no, that's a sh high single and uh, high crotch. Yeah, definitely step on the toe single, all that type of stuff. Uh, but like, He's not the type of guy that if if he if he can't finish on you, then he'll just start sprinting and try and get you out of bounds. He'll just take what's there. He's right. I love like, it. I love it. I love it. But I agree. Yanni, he he'll feel some. Yeah, 
Vajrang Vajrang is going to struggle with Yanni and his defense. I, I think so as well. Okay, I'm calling. So, I'm calling at least I hope so. I right, hope so. so. I want to turn this back on to Kyle just for, for a second because he's got to get out of here. So I, I got to get out of here too. So, yeah, uh, so wait. Kyle, I know, I know that, that this is an important event for you. This is, you know, not only, you know, do you get to compete, but also, you know, the nature of Beat the Streets and the initiative that, yeah. that, that this endeavor and the opportunities it, it provides. But for you personally, you know, I know you competed in Dan Kolov fairly recently, but did you think in preparation to, to Final X, did you need some type of competition? Did you want some type of competition before Final X? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I was, if I, if I, if I wasn't going to be able to wrestle on this event, then I would have either flown somewhere in the United States and had a simulation tournament with guys, or we would have brought guys in. So, um, yeah, I mean, after the beat the streets, Jaden Cox is coming, coming into town to train for a week. And again, that's another, another, we'll, we'll wrestle simulation matches. We'll compete with each other, but uh, it's different. Obviously it's different when you're actually out there being repped and people are watching. So even, even though I'm not wrestling, uh, one of the one of the top guys in the world. It's still good to get better at competing, so I can get better at competing when I'm actually in competition. So it's uh, I'm glad that I have a match. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get to we'll we'll get you one one other take on the other side of the coin, like you know, with the guy on the other side of the microphone here with Ben <laughs> competing ah. next week. You know, I I know a lot of people are talking about that, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. But we'll, what were your initial thoughts when you heard that 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 Ben and Jordan were were going to be strapping it up against each other? I was surprised that the match was going to happen. I was surprised. Uh, who called out who? Well, no, no one really called on anyone. Technically right. speaking, I mean, he did it on Twitter. But what happened was they texted me. I think because the NCAA champs wouldn't accept the match against Jordan. I don't know which one. Right. Uh, they asked me. I said yeah, and then he was being stingy. He was. He was trying to get me to make a lighter weight class. And I said, come on, man, let's just do this. And then he put it on Twitter. And I think, you know, everyone got really, really excited about it. And then so I think once he saw that people were excited about it, he, he you know, he gave yeah. me a little more leniency on what he wanted the weight class to be. Because, I man, I can't make a tiny old weight class for a, a charity wrestling match. I got, you know, so I got all the way up to 79 kgs. I could have taken another kg or two, but we'll, we'll call it a deal. <laughs> Yeah, so I I knew people would be excited about the match. I, yeah, I I, I think that uh, it'll be interesting. I'm gonna have to say that JB is quite the heavy favorite in this bout, but Ben, we'll, yep. we'll see what happens. I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, Matt, we call it a day. That that was awesome, Kyle. Thank you for coming on. We uh, you're welcome. Any literally any time you want to come on, you're more than welcome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. All right. See you guys later. All right. Take care. See you.